What's the plan after Clay's injury and how did the Warriors do after free agency? Let's run it. What's up guys, welcome to Demnation Live. I'm Wally. And I'm Kian, and today we're going to be seeing how the Warriors did in free agency. But before we get started, did you know that 70% of you guys that watch the videos aren't subscribed? Here, I'll give you 5 seconds to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you subscribe. Here we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, done. If you could do that, comment down below, free agency. Alright guys, so in our last video, me and Keon had projections on who the Warriors should sign. Let's see who was right and who was wrong. Alright, so with my first pick, I got Derrick Rose. Now, Warriors didn't get Derrick Rose, but he's technically not out of reach just yet. Derrick Rose is still with the Detroit Pistons, and the Warriors still got the disabled exception to be able to spend. Now, at the trade deadline, depending on how the team is, how competitive they are, they could still go after Derrick Rose. Trade maybe a player like Kevon Looney or a pick and basically absorb Derrick Rose's salary into the cap. Now, with my first pick, I chose Marc Gasol. <laughs> Marc Gasol signed with the Los Angeles Lakers for two years and 5.3 mil. There are no other centers on the roster and people that could help are Anthony Davis, Montrez Harrell, and Markeith Morris. Now, I don't want to sound like a homer, but I think this is a signing that the Warriors could have gotten before the clay injury had they been contending for a championship. Now, rumors have it that the Warriors were in on Marc Gasol until he chose the Los Angeles Lakers. And this is a signing that I think the Warriors could have gotten had they been contending for a championship. All right, my next player was Rajon Rondo. <laughs> Now, Rajon Rondo signed with the Atlanta Hawks for two years, $15 million. There are no rumors about the Warriors going after Rajon Rondo. And to be honest with you, for $15 million, two years, I don't think the Warriors were interested in giving him that much money. Now, Rondo will be backing up Trey Young, and another point guard on the roster is Brendan Goodwin. My next player was Serge Ibaka. He signed with the Los Angeles Clippers for two years and $19 million. Other power forwards on the roster is Marquise Morris and Patrick Patterson. My next player was Avery Bradley. <laughs> now, there are reports that the Warriors were in on Avery Bradley, but he decided to sign with the Miami Heat for two years, 11.6 mil. The other shooting guards on the roster are obviously Jimmy Butler, Bubble Sensation, Tyler Hero, and Kendrick Nunn. Now, another signing that I think if the Warriors were a contending team, they could have had Avery Bradley for this amount of money. Now for my third pick, I chose Brandon Knight. Now, we don't know, he's still a free agent, and we don't know what team he's going to go to. So we don't know if he's going to come to the Warriors or if he's not. I wouldn't count on that, Keon. Neither would I. Alright, so for my last player, Kent Bazemore. That's right, he signed with the Warriors on a one-year deal, minimum contract. All right, so one player who's hyped about getting base more is Stephen Curry. As you can see, Stephen Curry already posted a picture of his FaceTime with Bazemore saying he's back. Now, for the ones who didn't know, Kent Bazemore started his career with the Golden State Warriors. He came here as an undrafted free agent, and he became a fan favorite from the start. Now, over the years, Stephen Curry and Kent Bazemore remained close. They enjoyed playing together, and then they remained friends as the years went on, and Bazemore signed with other teams. Also, some may not know, but Ken Bazemore was actually the one who recruited Stephen Curry to join Under Armour. Now, whether that's good or bad for us, I don't know. But Ken Bazemore was signed with Under Armour, and Stephen Curry decided to sign with Under Armour as well. Now, another player that the Warriors got is Brad Wanamaker. He signed with the Golden State Warriors for one year and 2.3 mil. He's 31 years old and a 6'4 point guard. We don't know much about him, but he was undrafted in 2011, and he played in Europe and then signed with the Boston Celtics for the last two years. Now, we all know that the Warriors needed a backup point guard, and they were able to get a vet to complement the rookie, Nico Mannion. Now, if you look at all the players that the Warriors didn't sign, they all signed for two years, and all the players that they did sign, signed for one year. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you that the Warriors have a plan. They want to keep their options open for next year, whether that's for Giannis, whether that's for another superstar, or whether that's just having flexibility to be able to move the roster around, see what they have this year, and move the roster around for next year. But one thing is for sure, Bob Myers and company have a plan. So Keon, what grade would you give the Warriors on filling Clay's void? 
Um, I'd give them a B plus because I think that they did really good with getting back Ken Bazemore because he's really good at getting into the arc and getting those jump shots in. He's also really good at defense, which was one of the assets that Clay brought. And the thing that they did really well was getting Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, I think that he's got a lot of potential to fill. Now, what about you, Willie? What would you give him? Yeah, I'm right there with you, actually. I would give him a B um, for the job that they've done. I mean, obviously, Clay is such a big part of the team. He's such a great player. Uh, there's not going to be one or two players is not going to be able to do what Clay does. Uh, but the way they brought Ken Bazemore, Kelly Oubre Jr., two wings that really how they can help the team is by being themselves, by bringing the asset that they have, which is athleticism, defense, uh, being able to slash and get inside. And, you know, to be honest, the lineup of Kelly Oubre, Ken Bazemore, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, and James Wiseman, that's a pretty good defensive team. Obviously, the Warriors are used to having a great defensive team with Iguodala and KD in the lineup. Uh, but this is pretty good. I think they can recreate that same type of aggressive defense with different players. Well, that's all that we've got for you guys today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any new videos. That's it for today, guys. Peace out.